Hey, it is 2020, so I want to share with you guys a detailed learning and study plan for the DevNet Associate or DevAsk exam. Be right back. If you recall, Cisco rolled out the new DevNet program about six months ago with the Associate and Professional tracks and apparently a pending Expert track. It is no secret that all DevNet exams are scheduled to go live in about a month from now. DevNet is Cisco's developer training program to help software engineers who want to develop applications using the SDKs or perhaps network engineers who want to write integrations with Cisco products using primarily Python language and REST APIs. Now, since those are uncharted territories for the general target audience, I thought it would be helpful for everyone if I put together a detailed learning and a study plan. So here we go. DevNet Associate or 200901 exam consists of six bodies of knowledge. So in order, we have software development and design, understanding and using APIs, Cisco platform and development, application deployment and security, infrastructure and automation. And as we all know, it would not be Cisco-esque if they did not add a section on network fundamentals. So if you are like me, and want to parse them out a little bit and simplify, you can sum them up actually into three bigger buckets, i.e. software development APIs, infrastructure automation, or infrastructure as code. I know that sounds a bit commoditized to, just, to justify Cisco premiums. And then finally, the fundamentals of networking infrastructure, cloud, and security. Now, before we move over to the spreadsheet that I put together to drive this discussion forward, I wanted to let you know that full stack Stack Networker is first out the gate to publish an online course as well as a paperback study guide to help you prepare and pass the DevNet Associate exam. The learning plan here that you see is organized around the Cisco's official exam blueprint. So I have it and then each exam topic and then the learning scope, learning groups, self-assessment, learning resources, and finally, the number of minimum hours that I believe that you need to commit to each exam topic. And I've laid that down as minimum hours. So now, we have six domains of knowledge with their respective weights on the exam. So we have software development design, understanding and using APIs, Cisco platforms and development, application deployment and security, infrastructure and automation, and finally, network fundamentals. Next up, I've broken down each line item into whether that's about learning a concept or that's about learning a concept and as well a lab to back up your theoretical understanding. So going by that approach, the DevAsk exam works out to be about 60% concepts or theories and 40% where you need to perform hands-on, in my opinion. And then next up, it, I have summarized the six domains into three bigger buckets, the ones we discussed earlier, so that you can do a self-assessment to understand what it would take for you to prepare for the DevAsk exam. So for example, if you are a software developer, you may be about one third of the way there already. All right, so if you are a DevOps engineer, you may be about halfway there, so you would need to work on the other half, which is as good as it gets. Next up is the, if you are a network engineer, then you need to put in some serious efforts to cover about 80% of the exam topics. In my opinion, that's the sort of moment of truth for folks with very traditional network engineering skill set. So if you are one of them, go ahead and transform your skill set now and avoid seeing your job getting automated in the next few years. Anyhow, moving on. Next up, I have handpicked free resources from the web that should help you cover some of the ground. You will notice that some of the links point to Full Stack Networker or the Full Stack DevAs course material or even our blog posts where we have covered those topics. Now, last but not least, I've taken a stab at the amount of time that in hours it would take uh, you to learn each exam topic 
and it works out to be about 200 minimum hours. Now please note that emphasis on that I put on minimum as your mileage may vary. Now in terms of the study plan, you can cover those 200 hours in a few uh, ways, depending on the number of hours you're able to commit each day and obviously the number of days in a week. So for those of you who are super committed to learning network automation and becoming the DevNet Associate Certified, I believe you can cover all of the exam topics in about 12 weeks of study. So this is the weekday. So if you are able to, as an example, if you are able to commit four hours a day, each day, which is obviously super difficult for someone with a day job. So this is more maybe if you are a student or you are new to this and you got a lot of time or you're in between jobs, then you could use this type, kind of a study plan. On the other hand, if you obviously work a very busy full, you know, day job, then in that case, you could commit hours on Sundays and Saturdays. And obviously it will, in turn, it would mean it would take you longer to cover those 200 minimum hours. So maybe it takes you 20 weeks to, to do that. Versus if you're able to do either weekday study or you're able to combine and mix and match the week versus if you're able to commit three days a week, four hours of study, and then also one of the days over the weekend, let's say Sunday, where most of us actually able to, um, you know, focus on some of these studies, then it you can cover all of the material and then minimum, minimum number of 200 hours in about 12 weeks. All right, so that's it for now. I hope this learning plan helps you get motivated to transform your career to a network automation engineer or perhaps a network DevOps. So until we meet next time, ciao.